Today we're gonna call him Kill. But you know who's Chris. Incubus in the house. What's going on, man? What's up, you guys? Dude, uh, first of all, thanks for sitting down with us. It's, you're one of those bands that, uh, I'm, I'm, I say this because uh, I'm a fan, but you're one of those bands that you really don't need to talk to anybody. I mean, you. it's good that you <laughs> talk to people, though, and I, I appreciate yeah. you sitting down with us. Yeah, I mean, we all, we're all kind of just low-key down-to-earth guys, so, you know, we, we don't mind talking. We're a little, it's a little rough right now. We're, you know, we're almost done with this U.S. tour. We're probably, I'd say, a little more than three-quarters of the way through, and we all got cold right now. Okay, <laughs> this is why, this is why so my like, voice uh, right now... I sound like Lucille Ball in the final years. If not now, when? The first album since 2006. Yes. Um, it's a great album, by the way. It's getting Thank fantastic you. reviews, including my own. Uh, we talked about this on the morning show on Fox 26. And uh, you guys, what was going on with the break? Was it a nice little, like, hey? I mean, we kind of just said, hey, we don't have any lives anymore. We were on the road from, I mean, even, even... In that break that we took, we were still doing touring. We did touring on the Monuments and Melodies tour, which was the greatest hits record, and then we just we went to South America. So we were kind of still doing a couple of things, but we at least had our longest break to date since I've been in this band, you know, since 98, and I know those guys were going for like a year or two before me. And uh, we didn't have anything to talk about except being on tour, and we were just like, we got to take a break. We need to get some inspiration. Yeah. And live life a little bit so that's what we did you know Mikey went to school yeah uh, Brandon wrote a solo record and took some art classes Ben went on tour and did you know two solo records I think uh, Jose took a lot of lessons I went on tour with Ben one time and I took crazy lessons I'm kind of a keyboard player now <laughs> which is crazy yeah it's kind of cool I actually really enjoy it you know I mean I'm still a DJ obviously but right, right. but uh, I have a new tool in my toolbox which is pretty sweet but uh, we needed to do that, you know. And now we get back together and we write a record like this, yeah. and everybody thinks, you know, a lot of the diehard fans are like, well, these guys all softened up and da And it's like, you know, I think we just grew. You know, I think we we are still, you know, the rock band that we've always been. But I think that these this record that we wrote is something that we could not have written had we not taken a break. It's funny that you mention that because I was going to actually say that some of the reviewers and you've seen them uh, have said, you know, this is a, is this a mature sound uh, for Incubus? And I, I, my question, I guess, would be, you pretty much answered it, but does it does it bother you? Is that a fair? It doesn't bother me. No, no, no. I, I I look at it like it's part of our catalog. You know, is that seven full length records now, and they're all different. If yeah. you listen to one, you couldn't you couldn't say what the next one was going to sound like. So I look at it the same way, that the next record we write is going to be totally different as well. You know, it might be the exact opposite of this slower record, you know, it might be the fastest record we ever wrote. I mean, that's going to hard, be hard to beat, but... <laughs> you're you're a records. great interview, by the way, because that's what I was going to close with. I needed to get that little tease about the eighth Incubus album. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, but I mean, just to, just to finish my yeah. thought, like, these songs add a, a incredible dynamic to our live shows. Because we play all the songs from all of our records, you know, not all of them, obviously. There's, I think we have 104 songs that we can play, and we play about 20 a night. <laughs> how do you how do you pick what what you're gonna play? I mean, you I know, know I I try I play I try to be as open as possible. It's just my personality, and I try to do whatever. So I usually lay it up to Brandon. You know, he's got to sing the songs. So some songs are harder for him to sing at the beginning of the set. Some songs are harder for him at the end. So we just kind of formulate a good structure. And then change out a couple songs in between. I cheated and saw the uh, set list from the Dallas show, which was pre before Houston. Which interesting story about the rainstorm. I heard you guys were delayed because yeah. of the lightning. Yeah. But I, I cheated. I saw the set list and one of my favorites, uh, "Love Hurts." I like that song. Yeah. Well, it wasn't on there. No, we haven't been playing that much. We played it at the beginning of this tour. Okay. But uh, we haven't been playing it much. I think you know some songs are we just play so much that we just gotta take a break from. It. You know, we did that with Drive. Yeah. Uh, a couple years ago. You know, everybody thinks that that's a song you have to play. Yeah. But it's like, you know, once in a while, it's okay if we don't play it. And right. We ended up doing a whole tour and not even playing that song. <laughs> Interesting. No, I mean, you've yeah. got so many to choose from. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. it, it's good to uh, to do that. Um, all right. So, you've got a show that was just announced, and this is pretty cool, man. Uh, it's the Formula One concert in November in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. You guys ever played there before? No. We played Dubai, but not Abu Dhabi. And... I noticed on the list, I saw Britney Spears, The Cult, 
Paul McCartney, and Incubus listed. Yeah. So if you were to jump on stage with any of those artists, be it Britney, the Colt, or Paul, who would it be? <laughs> Man. I mean, there's two I would choose from. It would be the Colt or Paul McCartney, for sure. I mean, Britney would kind of be cool, too. But I, I'd, I'd probably say Paul McCartney. I'd say Paul McCartney. I, I mean, I, they're all incredible acts in their own right. Right. You know? But I, I would say Paul McCartney. Have you ever met Paul before? No. So this is a chance. It's coming up. Yeah. I, you know, I think we're all doing different nights. But still, yeah. there'll be a big party. Oh, it's Formula it's One. Paul Mc, it's Formula One. Yeah. I mean, dude, there's, yeah. there's going to be really, really cool stuff happening. We all are right. literally leaving our European tour to fly there for one day. And so we're literally going to land, play a show, get on a plane and leave. Wow. So we won't be there too long. Did uh, This is an 18th month tour that you guys are on right now. Yeah, give or take a few months, you know. Depends on how it winds up towards the end. Yeah, but still, I mean, that's that's a year and a half of, of you know that this is this is you know, and not a lot of artists can can do something like that. I mean, you guys have been fortunate enough to to be able to, to tour, you know, yeah. on, on, like that. Is that um, just a, a kind of like oh, do you do you look at it like it's almost like a job? Like oh well, uh, you we gotta go. Well, some days it's a job, you know, and like like recently we all got colds, you know, and you can't. There's no time to rest up and get over a cold mm -hmm. and. You're with other people that have cold, so it kind of just, man, you know, starts to brew and, and, and kind of weighs you down a little bit. But, you know, it's it, it ebb and flows. Sometimes it's really fun. Mm -hmm. you know, like, this is the greatest job in the world. And other days, I know today Brandon's going to have a tough time. He's you know? sick. He's sick, and he's, yeah. he's got to sing, and he represents the face of our band. Right. That's a tough spot to be in. It's very stressful. You know, at least I can hide in the back. I don't have to talk or sing or anything like that. So I can still do, I can still do my job from puking. And thank you. you. I appreciate you yeah, again. I uh, already thank you, but for taking some time with us today because I know I know, dude. I didn't have a voice for like, and we had to interview. We sit down with like with Blink One Eighty Two and Matt and Kim the other day. And yeah. I didn't talk for the whole day. Tried to save it, but my it's coming back. It's I'm coming feeling back. better today. Yeah. I think we got this in this. All right. Perfect. So uh, the, the the record is out. Hey, before we we wrap this up, I got to ask you this: Did you think, looking back now, of ten, eleven years, whatever it's yeah. been? Did you have any idea? I mean, there's people that are watching this right now that are, you know, in that position where like we, the dream, the dream is there. Like they want to start, they want to do this, they want to have the success like Incubus has had. Did yeah. you have any idea that back then this would become such? A, I mean, you've got semis with your equipment. You've got yeah. buses galore back here. Yeah. We're backstage with you. Yeah. Um, did you have any idea then that this would be as big as it is? No, not at all. I just knew that I like doing this, you know, and. I think that's one of the main things you need to have. If you, I think if you start out and say, oh, I want to be famous, that's a harder road to go down. And a couple of people have done that, I mean, you know, but they end up seeming really cocky and really, you know, like, this is what I do and I'm famous. And that's kind of, for me, that's not what I would do. I, I, I always said that at the minute I stop having fun doing something that I'm doing, whatever it is, if it's really affecting my mental state, then I'm out. Like, and I still feel bad about this, but I have a lot of fun doing this, and I love doing this. And I think that that's how it all started. You know, it was up in the up in the attic in my mom's house. Yeah. You know, with my turntables all night yeah. long. Yeah. And that's that was just that was just stuff I like to do, and I still like to do it. That's real. Yeah. Uh, okay. What's what's next? You you tease an eighth album. We definitely on the fan side and, and us and the media. Uh, I'm a good guy, by the way. I'm from friendly media. Yeah. Uh, it's we definitely, I, you know, it's kind of hard to ask about that when this album just really kind of came out. Yeah. You're touring about it, but I mean, it's yeah. got to be in the back of your mind. I mean, I think we all think about it. I think we're all at the state where we're we're gonna write another record. You know, I mean, that's a, that's a lot of records. You know, most bands don't make it this this far. You know, and I mean, there's proof positive if you just look at all the bands that played with us when we started and where they're at now. Most of them are by the roadside. Yeah. You know. And, uh, it, you know, the older you get, the more opinionated everyone gets and the harder it is to write a record. And, uh, you know, this is our last record on our contract with Epic Records. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that are at play, but all of us have the mindset that we're going to write another record. Wow, that opens up a whole new window with the way the industry has changed. A lot of bands yeah. are doing it on their own. Yeah. And you guys are certainly in that position to do that. Yeah, it's something we have to figure out. So, I mean, it would be a lot wow. of thought in the how we do it, but I know that we all are thinking that we're going to write So you'll record. start a record company, and I'll get that spoken word album yeah. uh, that I've always dreamed of. You're going to sign me, and I'll win that Grammy. There anyway. you go. Listen, uh, Kill, it's great talking with you, yeah. man. Again, continued success. 
and get better and have a fantastic show tonight.